Very quickly, it seems to me that the Rotary Spirit Award is going to go either to John Bush or to Ray Briggs. Just that's just eyeballing it. Can they both come up here and model? So if we can get them both up here. <laughs> yeah, come up here and model, boys. <laughs> you know, I think Ray ought to do this because I have a disadvantage because uh, half of these are Judy's. Uh, well, we didn't say you had to own them. I think that. Okay. Karen and Troy, could you come up and count? How about we just do a vote? How many people say John has more spirit than the How can we especially count the socks? Count the socks. That's show true. The, show the socks. Show, show the socks. Oh, well, here, and I have to do this too. He's got on underwear. And the district governor has on rotary socks. Yeah, he does. fish fry. She stayed and even helped clean up. She was an awesome volunteer. She was an awesome volunteer. So if you would consider helping on Friday, the 25th of September to just be a runner, the cars are going to drive through. They're going to pick up their spaghetti dinner. It's already going to be made. All they need is people to help get it to the car. So she said really two to four people would be awesome. So um, two people to run the dinners, two people for drinks. And that's from five to eight, uh, sorry, Saturday, September 26th. Sorry, Saturday, September 25th. It's right Just one other announcement. Please stick around after the meeting so we can get a group picture. And uh, I would like to introduce our district governor, Kurt Bucci. Is it Bushy or Bucci? I think Bushy. I see. Bushy? Bushy. So I had it wrong anyhow. Anyway, Kurt Bushy. Um, who is a member of the Vincennes Indiana Rotary Club. He joined in 1987. He has been the president of that club twice. And an interesting note, in the 107-year history of the Vincennes Rotary Club, he's the only Vincennes Rotarian to serve as president for two terms. So that says a lot about your club. That sounds like a pretty great club. He was the Vincennes Rotarian of the Year in 2019. Um, he's married, and his wife, Becky, is also a Rotarian, I guess. No. No, just a, a Paul Harris fellow? Yeah. She's in her own right. right. Okay, so they're both multiple Paul Harris fellows. Um, Kirk was born and raised in Vincennes. He is the eighth generation of the Bushy family in Vincennes, going back to 1760. So that's some continuity. 
Um, they have two sons, Doug and David. They have five grandkids and two grand dogs. And I'm going to leave all this stuff about your career because then you can tell us that better than I can. But welcome uh, from the Bedford Road Club. Get organized here. Well, thank you, everyone. And, uh, you know, it's great to be here in Bedford. Uh, you guys have a great group. I, I met with several of you before the meeting, and uh, you've got a lot going on. Uh, this, uh, and, and I know John Bush can vouch for this. We've already talked about it a little bit this morning here. This is the best part of this job, is to get out and see the uh, clubs in their environment uh, at your meetings. Uh, you are the 12th club that I visited since the 1st of July in person. Uh, I kind of have a rule right now and I hope it, it holds that I really want to get to every club in person this year. And, and we're praying that the, the virus will, will calm down and hopefully someday here soon go away. But um, I know the medical people are working hard on that and uh, we all need to play our part, but uh, I'm really happy to be here in person and to be able to meet all of you. The meal was great today. You know, from time to time, I have folks at other clubs ask, so, so are, are we the best club? I said, I, I can't. <laughs> I can't, I can't divulge that until I'm finished. I, I can't, uh, but uh, we have some great clubs. I mean, uh, Rotary is alive and well in Southern Indiana, um, even in spite of the struggles that we've had the last couple of years uh, with the pandemic and meeting on Zoom and changing locations and worrying about food and, and how are we going to serve it and all those things that you all have all dealt with, uh, you know, the mask or no mask and so forth. But um, it's alive and well. Rotary is surviving and actually thriving. Uh, our district actually grew in membership last year. And um, uh, our leadership team at the district, including District Governor Jessica, last year did a great job guiding us through uh, an, an awful year with regards to the pandemic. And, uh, you know, Rotary is designed to bring people together. The pandemic, obviously, is designed to pull people apart. And uh, so uh, we've had that competing uh, uh, strategies going on, but uh, it's great to be here. Uh, I do want to recognize a few people. So when I say your name, if you would come up here and just stand in front of the, the food table here, I've got something I want to give each of you. Uh, obviously, I want to congratulate Rowena, President Rowena, this year uh, for stepping up in the leadership role here in the club with all your rotary. And yeah, watch that wire. I guess go around that way, probably be the safest. Um, and uh, uh, past president, everywhere I go, I want to specifically thank and congratulate last year's president of our Rotary Clubs, because hopefully last year will go down in history that we'll all remember as the most difficult year to guide a Rotary Club. So Ray, I'd like for you to come forward and uh, thank you for leading this club in a very, very challenging year. Now, John's already making his way up here. He, did, he didn't know that he's the next guy I was going to call on. Uh, yeah, well, come on up. John Bush, uh, what can I say about John Bush? Uh, well, let me start by saying something about Judy Bush. Uh, Judy was our, our district governor, um, 1617, no, 1718. And uh, Judy was the one that was in charge of the committee. We have a structure on how past district governors serve to select future district governors. Well, Judy was the chairperson of the committee 
uh, of four or five people in the district that selected me as a district governor, you know, coming up. You, you, you become the district governor nominee designate, you become the, then the next year you're the district governor nominee, then you're the district governor elect, and now I'm the district governor. So it's a process, but Judy was the one that put the confidence in me and it was her committee that selected me. And I, I will always remember her phone call to me that Saturday evening, congratulating me and making sure that I was gonna accept the, the job. So with that, I wanna thank these three people and I have something for you. And I guess it's fitting today because I have the official <laughs> socks. <laughs> For, for each one of you. So you don't have to change them now. But the next time I see you, John, I'll expect you to have those on. Uh, okay, you guys can, but don't, don't trip over the wire. Well, you guys are in good hands with your leadership. And, and uh, I also want to recognize, uh, our, she's not here, but our, our uh, assistant governor for this area, Sarah Laughlin, does a great job. I, I convinced all eight of the assistant governors to stay on this year. Uh, you know, I'm kind of one of these guys, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And uh, I, like, I like experienced people in jobs. Now, it doesn't mean that there's not room for new people to step up. And uh, I'll mention something about that here in a minute. Betty Dunham is our district uh, administrative assistant and uh, there is no way you know I still work I, I I have a full time job when I leave here I'll drive back to my office in Vincennes and check on things that are happening over there today in our utilities but um, I've got a staff of about 45 people that do a great job for our city and uh, for our utilities I have water wastewater storm water and levee operations for Vincennes as we are a, uh, a river town. So, but Betty Dunham uh, has been a great addition. She is a past district governor. Some of you probably remember her year as district governor. Uh, and it's just great to have her keeping track of me and keeping me on target with, with everything that we're doing these days. And uh, I could not do this job if it wasn't for the fact that our district was able to, uh, to get a part-time uh, uh, administrative assistant. So I encourage you to call on Betty anytime you need anything. Uh, she's very helpful. Um, the district newsletter just came out yesterday. I hope all of you got that via email. Uh, if you're not getting that, let Rowena know or let Betty know. It, it, and uh, a lot of information in that newsletter about the calendar and upcoming events. Uh, you should all be getting the Rotary Magazine, which is uh, helpful in terms of seeing what's going on in the world of Rotary outside of, of uh, our area. My official job today is to greet you from on behalf of Rotary International President Shaker Mehta, he is from Kolkata, India. Uh, he is a member since 1985 of the Rotary Club of Calcutta Mahanagar in India. He is an accountant by training and is a, is a, a very successful real estate developer in, uh, in India. His theme that he select each year, the RI president selects a theme. This year, our theme that he selected is serve to change lives. And the logo uh, that is on those socks and on the front of the banner here uh, is, is something that, that he, I'm sure, had a lot of input into designing uh, as the president usually does every year. You know, Themes come and go, uh, they, they, they all kind of, we, you know, most of the themes are, are very general in nature. Uh, this year's theme served to change lives. I mean, I think a lot of what we do in Rotary, it's our objective to change lives for the better. 
uh, obviously, or we wouldn't be doing it. And I know here in Bedford, you all work on things, uh, um, your funds that you raise, uh, that you do scholarships and other, other community uh, donations for, uh, I'm sure you've done food pantry work, uh, you've done uh, uh, helping with uh, clean water for, for folks. So, um, but each year the RI president sets out goals and as I talked to the group before the meeting today, you know, Rotary is really about three things. It's about members. It's about money. And, and what I mean by that, I don't, I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean, we have to have the resources um, to do the projects that we do. So, you know, money is a factor in, in terms of your local club, as well as our Rotary International Foundation has to have resources. The, the, the foundation is really the engine that drives the uh, service. That's the third area. So it's, it's, it's members, money, and service. And, and when you think about it, you can't really take one of those out and the other two be successful. You've got to have all three for Rotary to be successful. So, you know, the president's message is we want to grow Rotary. Uh, we've been kind of stuck on 1.2 million members worldwide for quite some time. His goal this year is very aggressive. We'd like to grow to 1.5 million members worldwide. Now, a lot of that membership growth will probably not come from the United States, but that's his goal. The way he puts it is, uh, he would like for each one to bring one. So the challenge for us is, and I talked to a lady uh, in Vincennes yesterday about joining Rotary, and hopefully she's going to come to a meeting next week, one of the rare meetings that I can attend in Vincennes. You can't believe how many clubs meet on Tuesday at noon in, in this district. And then Thursday at noon is the second most popular. Um, but... Um, each one bring one. So the challenge from him through me to you is to think about all the people here in Bedford and in Lawrence County um, that you know, rather it be in your church, your schools, uh, your neighborhood, uh, friends that you have coffee with in the morning, uh, you, you know, your kids go to school with those people. Think about who in your life that you know that could benefit from being involved with this Rotary Club. And I've been involved in Rotary since 1987, and I could probably count, and, I, and I'm not proud of this, but I could probably count on one hand the number of people that I've actually recruited to Rotary. And I've not done a very good job myself of doing that. I've been real involved in Rotary, but that's not the first thing that I think about. But as we talked before, we've got to grow Rotary. We got to get we got to get all ages of people involved. I mean, there Rotary is a big tent, and there's a lot of room for retired folks that have never been in Rotary. There's a lot of room for young professionals, and there's a role for everybody. So uh, I encourage you to think about that. Uh, you know. Foundation support, your club has several Paul Harris fellows. You have, you have people that have supported the foundation. I, I certainly want to thank John Bush and, and, and Judy's memory uh, in donating points last year uh, to our foundation, our, our, our district foundation drive to add Paul Harris fellows to the roles. And that certainly was a huge success. And uh, it was because of John and his foresight to help us with that. So I'd like to recognize John and give him a hand for that. Uh, the president's name is Shaker Mehta. And he, he told all of us on a Zoom call uh, when we were in training in January uh, that he is the shaker and we are the movers. So. Um, I'd like to just give a, a couple updates about things, maybe most of which you probably already know, but I like to cover these so I know I've talked to everybody about polio. <clears throat> you know, polio 
is very important to me. Uh, I don't have any personal stories about people that I knew that had polio, uh, but I can I can remember discussions about it, and and when it was more of a top of top of mind awareness in in our own southern Indiana here, as a kid I can remember people talking about it, but. Uh, to think about you all are involved, we are all involved in an organization that, you know, we haven't done it by ourselves. You know, there's other organizations that have helped, but Rotary certainly has been at front of the line in terms of the fight to end polio forever from the face of the world. So in 2020, this is calendar year 2020, there was 140 cases of polio in two countries, Pakistan and Afghanistan. All the other countries have been deemed polio free based on the rules that they go by. Uh, so far this year, uh, we have had, well, last year for this period of time, there were 97 cases. This year, we've had two cases one in Pakistan and one in Afghanistan. So we're on it and we, we truly are. I know you've all seen the bumper stickers and the posters, you know, we're, we're this close. Um, obviously it's a big task, um, you know, with what's going on in Afghanistan, I can't imagine that that's gonna help the situation, but, um, but from what, I have read and heard, and I don't have any inside information, just what's available out there, that we're Rotary and, and the people who track all this are feeling uh, cautiously optimistic that this thing could come to an end. These numbers are very encouraging. And if everything goes well, it could come to an end in the next you know, three to five years. I mean, it takes a while to, to, to document everything and make sure. So, um, you know, I just think it's, a, it's kind of a neat thing that we're standing here in Bedford, Indiana or Vincennes, Indiana. And, uh, you know, we can talk about having been a part of something that worldwide and, and with that big an impact on, on the future of, of, of humanity. Um, I encourage you to think about World Polio Day, which this year is on a Sunday, Sunday, October 24th. Um, I don't know if you all are, are, have planned or have a normal thing that you do for Polio Day or anything, but um, uh, it's something to think about. At least I, I'd encourage you to read about you know, where we are, there's all kinds of information online. Jim Gisselson, past district governor, Jim Gisselson is our polio coordinator for our district. And I know he sends out at least to the presidents, you should be getting a, an update from time to time. You're not getting that. So we'll make sure that gets corrected. But anyway, that's where we are with polio. I think the, the news is cautiously optimistic. Uh, about the district, we have 34 clubs, uh, traditional clubs like yours. We added two new clubs last year. One was uh, Evansville at Night Club. Uh, that was a, a, a satellite club of one of the Evansville clubs that spun off into their own club. And then we have the Rotary Young Leaders Club in Vincennes, which was kind of a new, uh, unique type of club it, it they chartered with 46 members between the age of 25 and 37 and uh, they actually have a in their bylaws a an aging out uh at, at 37 they have to they they're booting them <laughs> over to the old club that, that i'm part of so so we added 46 new rotarians in vincennes in the district and between those two clubs that's really what made us over the top in terms of growth. We got a lot of attention for the district last year. Uh, the problem with that is you always got to do better the next year. So any of you that have ever worked in a big company that tracks all that kind of stuff, you know that if you have a really good year, the, you can celebrate it for about 30 seconds. And then you guys start working on how you're going to do better than you did last year. 
So um, we're, we're, we're working on that. We've got about 1,480 members in, in uh, the district. Um, we're always looking for new people uh, to not only step up into your own club. And I, I tell people that the most important job in Rotary is not the district governor or the president of Rotary. It's the local president. The local Rotary president is the most important job in Rotary and we need good people to fill those spots. And as what I have seen, the most difficult part of, of organizing a new Rotary year is when clubs struggle not having their succession plan. So I commend all of you for, for staying on top of that. That's probably the most important thing you can do is make sure that you've got good leadership. And Rowena talked about the fact that I'm the only one that's been twice president in Vincennes in 107 years. I don't think that says a whole lot about me as much as it says about our club having been able to find a, a new president for 106 years. Um, and uh, that, that's important. And I, I appreciate you guys staying on that. Uh, we have three Rotaract clubs. We have one at IU in Bloomington, one at uh, IU Southeast at New Albany. And then uh, we have an Evansville Rotaract club that's not affiliated with any of the, either of the schools down there. Uh, this year, we're going to be uh, awarding, we already have, about $42,000 in district grants. I don't think you guys are in that, that process this year, but I would encourage you to think about that for next year. Um, it's a fairly simple process uh, and, and Betty or I can get you any information on that. I'm sure you guys have done district grants in the past. We have, we just missed the training. Yeah. So, so anyway, we're, we're going to give the, the grants is about $42,000 and, and the way we get that money is based on how much people gave in our district to the Rotary Foundation three years ago. So it, it's kind of a three year deal. We get a percentage of what we gave back to reinvest in our district. So uh, that 42,000, when I look, I think there were 25 clubs that, that received money this year on, and the projects, right? The max is 3,000. Projects range from food pantry support to park improvements to literacy projects, um, water projects. So um, that's, that's a great thing. In Southern Indiana, that 42,000 will probably be converted to about $120,000 of total project costs counting what the clubs put in. And what I always say about that, and I guess, um, I need to change it based on what you all were telling me earlier. If that's all we did in Southern Indiana, that $120,000 of good, we'd beat the Lions Club. But um, I usually say Kiwanis there, but, um, but we don't, you know, think about, you're not doing a grant this year, but all the stuff that you do. So if we added all that up with all the clubs, I mean, you'd be looking at probably a, at least a million dollars worth of projects that are done throughout Southern Indiana, which makes a difference. Scholarships, water projects, shelter boxes, literacy projects, food, you know, the list goes on. So I just wanna personally thank all of you Bedford Rotarians for what you do, not only for your community and for Lawrence County, but you know, the world in general, you do a great job. Uh, three items I wanted to mention, well, more than three here, probably. I added a few here, but one, I'll, I'll rifle through these pretty quickly. Our district conference this year is planned to be in person for the first time in three years in Bloomington, not very far away. I'm not sure which direction it is from here, that way. Okay. 
Um, I know which direction it is from Bedford. I just didn't know. I didn't know which way I'm facing here in this building. Uh, Saturday, April the 9th, it's a one day conference going to be at the IU Memorial Union. Uh, it's been renovated. Uh, the hotel room, you probably don't need hotel rooms being a half hour away or less, but um, it's going to be a great day. And our plan is to make that a celebration of our district. It's just us. It's not the other districts involved. And uh, we really want to make that. We want to get the presidents there from the last three years, not just this year, but the last three years um, to really celebrate the fact that we've survived this pandemic. And hopefully by April, we won't be as worried about it as we are today. So uh, I'm sure you'll be hearing a lot about that coming up. Uh, I'll expect all of those that have got socks to have those on <laughs> at the district conference. So I'll be looking for you. Uh, district assembly. Uh, we have something called the district assembly. This is going to be uh, an informational session. It's going to be on Zoom, and you'll get information if you haven't already. I think it was mentioned in the in the uh, newsletter yesterday that came out. Uh, but it's going to be on October the 9th, a Saturday morning from 10 a.m. Eastern to about noon or 1220. And we're going to talk about some hot topics that apply to the clubs here in Southern Indiana. Um, so that, that you and there's no charge for that. Uh, I think the district conference, we're going to try to keep the registration fee at less than $100. So. Uh, we're going to have some good speakers and, and so forth, but the district assembly is free and it'll be on zoom. You can do it at home in your pajamas if you want to. Um, we're going to have two rotary foundation events for the rotary foundation Friday, November 19th is going to be in Bloomington at the union. If you haven't figured this out already, I'm kind of an IU guy. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, but honestly, Bloomington, we talked about a little bit. Bloomington is fairly central to our, uh, uh, our district. Um, we, I think John Bush mentioned the actual central point of our district is somewhere about halfway between Mitchell and Salem. Um, but uh, they don't have a convention center there. So the... Um, the other foundation event you'll hear more about is Friday, February 25th. And uh, we, haven't, we haven't set that yet. We're kind of waiting to see, you know, we, we may have it on Zoom, you know, that time of year, weather can be an issue. We'll have to see where the virus is at that time. The RI convention this year is close. It's in Houston, Texas. That's relatively close compared to Australia, Taiwan, Germany, or Hawaii. Um, Ryla and the speech contest are two things that I wanted to mention uh, that are in process. Um, we, we, we decided not to try to have an in-person Ryla again this year with the virus. Um, trying to bring high school kids together in living conditions at this time of year, given what all the high schools are going through, this probably wasn't going to be a good idea. Um, so we're working. Lauren Snyder from the Bloomington Club has always quarterbacked our RILA effort. And we're, uh, we're looking at options right now. Um, we may have something on Zoom. Uh, that's to be determined. And the speech contest as well. We're, we're not planning on bringing people together for that, but we're also, you know, like, like a lot of things, you know, the youth exchange is another one. You know, we don't want these things to go away at the end of the pandemic. I mean, we don't want the pandemic to be the thing that caused these things to end. And uh, we certainly are not planning for anything to end, but it's just, it's a struggle trying to keep them at the forefront while still not being able to do it the way we've always done it. So those are things we're working on. You'll hear more about. Um, 
what I always ask, and, and I, I shared some of this in a story that I put in the newsletter that Betty puts together, does a great job uh, doing that. I'm asking each of you this year to make Rotary a priority. And I say a priority in your lives. And I can tell here that that's not a, not a problem. I understand, I mean, lightning might strike me. I'm the district governor from Rotary. I'm, I'm the Southern Indiana salesperson for Rotary. But I'm here to tell you that there are more important things in your life than Rotary. There's more important things in my life than Rotary. And I, you know, the lightning hasn't hit yet. Okay, your family, your faith, your health, your livelihood, uh, you know, those are just a few things that I can think of that I would probably rank higher than Rotary in my life. But you can still be with, with good balance of all those things, you can be a great Rotarian. And though, having balance in all those things will, will give you the opportunity to be a great Rotarian. And that, that's what I'm asking you to think about. That's the way I've always looked at it since 1987. Yeah, when I get my new calendar, and I still do the old-fashioned calendar, um, when I get my new calendar for the next year, I go in on every Tuesday at noon, and I write Rotary. Now, I have had perfect attendance since 1997, but, um, you know, I haven't made every meeting that I wrote Rotary into. I made it, I did a makeup in some fashion, you know, to, to make sure I, I kept that streak, but that's how I make it a priority. It, you know, we're all busy. The best Rotarians are busy people. Um, you wouldn't be a Rotarian if you weren't a busy person, probably. probably. You wouldn't like Rotary because Rotary is a busy thing. Um, you know, we've got a lot of work to do. You guys are on it. I, I can tell. If there's anyone that isn't registered on myrotary.org, uh, as a Rotarian, I'd encourage you to register on there. Our, our district has a fairly low percentage of Rotarians that are actually registered on there. It doesn't mean that we can track your every move, uh, but it does give you access to a lot of good information about Rotary and a lot of good uh, uh, training opportunities uh, for, that, that may help you in your business in your in your life uh, beyond rotary so i encourage you to do that i stole this from a radio script just to kind of end up things here and and we have some great radio ads if, if any of you have heard any of those that have come from wrote ri um, and and if you haven't heard them if you go on ri's website i'm sure you can play those uh, but they're pretty impressive and they always make me stop and think when i hear one i'm on the radio Together, we provide clean drinking water to many. Together, we bring food to hungry children in need. Together, we see solutions instead of problems. We are the 1.2 million members of Rotary, a collection of community leaders in your neighborhood and around the globe brought together to do one thing, make good happen. Together we are Rotary and we are people of action. Well, I know that I'm looking at a group here and the ones that are on Zoom and that aren't here, that we have people of action here in Bedford, Indiana to make more good happen. If I can be, help you be successful in that venture, uh, I'd like for you to call me. Let me know, let us know in the district leadership if there's any way we can help you. So with that, I, I thank you. I'm very honored to be your district governor. And uh, I'm very humbled to be your district governor as we all serve to change lives. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good job. Thank you.